Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. And this time, we're going to use the Rampant Design Tools paint effects to create this very horror look that you see in front of you. Now, I created a look like this for a Blu-ray release that was sort of a, a sci-fi horror movie, and I thought it was very cool. And I thought to myself, I wonder how I would create something like this inside of Apple's Motion, because I used Adobe's After Effects to create it. And as you can see in front of you, I've created a very cool look that not only has the blood look like it's coming right across the Rampant Design Tools logo, but if you look closely, you'll notice that I've created some depth with some of the blood appearing on only the Rampant Design Tools logo, and then that blood then transferring to the back wall behind it. And you can actually look and see the separation between the logo and the background behind it. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create this look relatively quickly and easily. All right, so let's command and tab into Apple's Motion. Now, obviously, just a command and tab because this tutorial is for all of my Mac only friends. Motion is a Mac only product. And as you can see, I've created the tile background for our, whether this is a bathroom or a laboratory that we're going to have in our back end tag here. And next, let's bring in our Rampant Design Tools logo. I'm just going to come to the desktop, and there is my Rampant Design Tools logo. You can see I can hit the space bar to get a great preview of it right there. I'm just going to say import. Now I'm going to want this logo to be in its own group. And what we also want to make sure as we go along, and I'm just going to call this tile background, not one, is that we name our groups just so we can easily find things if necessary. I'm going to call this Rampant Design Tools logo. I'll call it main because we're going to be using a few iterations of this logo uh, once we get in and start creating that blood spatter effect, which we're going to go about doing right now. So let's bring in our two elements. I'm just going to hide motion for a second here. I'm just going to come to my elements drive here. And here are the two elements that we are using from Rampant's Paint Studio. Of course, we have this sort of like a, a, you know, a knife has come through and cut something and some blood has flown onto the screen. And the great part is that this is a 4K element. So I'm really only going to focus on this part of the image right here. And then I thought to myself, well, you know what? It's not that it's boring just to have the one element, but how would we get in and start combining elements? Because obviously if something comes and you know splats blood on the wall, we're gonna have a little bit of drip coming down. So what I've done is I've also implement, implemented rampant paint element number 53. Now I'm only using this part of it here because I don't want the part of the paint that rolls off the screen. Okay, so let's get back into motion here and let's import our two paint elements again from my elements drive here. There we go. I'm just going to say import. They are brought in. We want them in their own group as well. So I'm just going to drag them out. Now, by dragging them out of one group, because there's two elements, it puts them into two separate groups, which we don't want. I want them all in one group. And we're just going to call this paint splatter. Actually, I guess it would be spatter. Okay. And let's now just deal with element 20 first, which is going to be the actual spatter effect, kind of like that. Now, one thing that's important that we see here, and I'm just going to come back to my properties here. I'm just going to come down to the opacity. I just want to make sure, I think that's pretty good, that we want a good part of it to appear over the Rampant Design Tools logo, kind of like about there, I think. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so let's bring the opacity right back up. Now, something else that's kind of important for me to point out if I zoom in here, you'll notice that the paint is not exactly black and that is something that's important to make sure that we do we want to make sure that this black is not any gray there's no gray in there it's all black so let's correct that right now I'm just going to come to my library I'm going to come to my filters and the effect I'm looking for is levels okay we're just going to type it in the search box at the bottom there's my levels effect I'm just going to drag that onto that paint and let's call up the heads up display here I'm not sure what parameters we have in the heads up display for levels we don't so that's okay we'll just go to the inspector here it's going to grab the midtones and there we go you'll see that was what it was before I, I sort of exaggerated a bit and that's what it is now which is more what we're looking for okay so let's now deal with this other element here I'm just going to turn the element on I'm going to move it to the top so that we can see it very easily now it's a little bit on the big side. We're going to get back in and we're just going to adjust the opacity again so we can see what we're doing. Perfect. Okay, so let's take this and let's position it. We also need to scale this right down. Okay, I'm going to grab the scale parameter, just scale it right down. And I think I'm going to place it right about there is pretty good. Okay, so I think we're actually okay here. Let's bring our opacity back up. And what we want to do with this blood element 
is I want to use a transfer mode to combine the two elements together. Great thing in motion, transfer modes, very simple to access. In motion, they're actually referred to as blend modes, not transfer modes. So if you hear me call them transfer modes, they are one and the same thing. So let's come down to blend, let's come down to multiply. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we've again got this other one here that I do want to rid ourselves of. So let's just get in, let's remove that here. Okay. I'm not going to worry about the fact that it comes right off the screen. Now you'll notice that when I put in the mask that it automatically defaulted to applying it to the group and I actually want to apply it to this element here. Okay, I'm just going to rejig that just a little bit here. Let me just zoom back here so I can grab the bottom points. And there we go. There's our element now all set to go. And what we also need to make sure of though, as you can see, is that it's not quite where it needs to be. Let me zoom in. You'll see that we got a little bit of white here. Let's just reposition this actual element here. Okay. I'm going to place it right about there, I think. I think that's good. Okay. Let me just deselect that layer. I think that's about as close as we're going to get. Now, here's the other problem. You'll notice that it actually starts dripping before the paint splat even happens. We need it to start dripping, you know, maybe about a second after the actual blood spatter hits. So let's say right about there, okay? So this is the layer we want to adjust. We're going to come down to our timeline. I'm just going to start it right about here. Now, something else you're going to notice is that if I come down to the end, this blood spatter element will last longer than 10 seconds, but our drip does not. So how do we get in and extend the drip all the way down to the end? Well, it's done right over here in the timing parameters inside the inspector. All we want to do with our end condition is set that to be hold. Now we can just grab the end, drag it all the way down with that bezier, and let's just see, there we go, perfect. So now what we have is the perfect blood spatter. Okay, now let me just come back here. I just wanna make sure, looking good, looking perfect. Okay, good. Alrighty, so let's now get in and let's make this that blood color that it needs to be. Okay, so I'm going to call this paint spatter for blood effect. Okay, and let's actually make sure I spell that correctly here. There we go. All right, so let's create a new group and I'm going to call this final paint spatter blood paint spatter. Again, this is important that we make sure we organize all these groups. So if we ever need to find something, we can find it very easily. I'm going to come back to the beginning and I need a color solid. So let's go to the library. Let's come to our generators. Now you'll notice that nothing appears in generators because I'm still looking for that levels effect. I want a simple color solid. There we go. Okay. And I'm not even going to get you to guess why I know this, but the RGB values for a blood effect or a blood look, if I call up the heads up display here, Let's come into color. I actually already have it saved down here, but in your RGB sliders, you can punch in 137, 7, and 7. Again, don't ask me why I know that. You can probably tell that I've done a few tutorials, you know, revolving around blood, okay? So there's our blood color. And what we now need to do is we need to use this and have the mask that we've created right here cut out our paint color or our blood color. So let's do that. I'm going to right click. We're going to come down to our image mask. And for the image mask, I want this paint, splat, paint spatter. Now, what's important for me to do to keep everything organized is I normally like to put the layer masks or the masks that we're going to use inside of the actual group that they're going to be applied to. Because what's going to happen is when we apply it as an image mask, it's immediately going to get switched off by motion. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take this paint spatter for blood effect, drag it onto the image mask parameter. You'll notice nothing has happened because if we come to the image mask, we need to make sure there's no alpha information. This is all done with luminance. Now you'll notice it's inverted, no problem. Let's just invert that mask and there is the blood effect. Okay, now I'm just gonna twirl this up here and you can see that we're starting to get to where we need to be, not quite. The animation is looking the way that it needs to. There we go. Now I think what I'm also gonna do here is I think my Rampant Design Tools logo is a little bit too big. Let me just shrink it down a little bit here. Let me come to the inspector. Let me just come to my scale. I'm just gonna scale it down just a little bit. There we go. Because I wanna do that camera move at the end where we move in slowly on the logo. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. Okay, now what I also wanted to do and what you may have noticed in the original uh, video that I showed you in the intro 
is that our blood actually had a little bit of depth to it. It actually looked like um, it had density, whereas this looks very flat, and this is not really the look that we're going to be going for. So I'm going to use a third-party effect from a fantastic company called FX Factory, and we're going to kind of use it in a way that you might not think that we would use it, but it actually creates a very cool end look. Okay. Now, how most people think that we should set this up should be like this. I'm going to come back to the library. I'm going to come back down to our search parameter, but I'm going to make sure we're on filters, and I'm going to type in emboss. Okay. Now, the effect that we're looking for is actually emboss text. You'll see it right there. Now, I put a space in, which actually called up emboss text, but this is the one that we want. I'm going to take emboss text. I'm going to drag it and drop it onto the final blood paint spatter. Okay. Now, the only problem with doing it like this is you'll notice that it didn't actually give me any depth to this blood. It just looks like it just changed the color. So I'm just going to delete that effect for one second because we actually need to nest this into another group, okay? Because we're doing this with an image mask, it doesn't like when I apply the emboss effect to the main group. So let's just do that, okay? We're gonna call this final embossed. We're gonna call this embossed, not final, let's just call it embossed blood effect, okay? I'm gonna place this in here. And once I do, we could twirl that up. I'm going to take the embossed text effect again. And when I drag and drop it now, now take a look at the depth with this blood effect. Now, don't worry about the fact that it's blue. We're going to fix that in just a second. But this is now the depth effect that we're going for. And it actually looks like this blood has some real density to it. So let's now get in and let's adjust this effect. I'm going to call up the heads up display, F7 again on the keyboard. And all I'm going to do is change each one of the colors in the emboss to my favorite color, which is the blood color. And once I've changed those three colors, you'll now see that this blood has some real depth to it, okay? like that. Very nice. Now I think what I'm also going to do here is let me just take my Rampant Design Tools logo. Let's just give it a bit of a drop shadow here. Let's come down to the Show Shadows. Now what we actually want to do is a drop shadow. We don't want to show shadows. Let's add a drop shadow. You know what? I'm fine with that. That actually just gives it a little bit of the depth that it needs from the background. Okay. We are almost there. Okay. We now need to do two different blood spatter masks. We need to mask the blood so that it only appears on the Rampant Design Tools logo and then we need to invert that so that it only appears on the background and is cut out so that it appears as though the Rampant Design Tools logo has stopped that blood as it's been flung at it and it's only certain parts of it that didn't hit the Rampant Design Tools logo will hit the background. So let's now get in and let's do that. What we're going to do is I'm going to turn off this layer. This is going to this is our main layer, but we need to use a couple of masks here, okay? So let's take this layer, let's duplicate it. Okay? And what we want to do is with this embossed effect, we're going to duplicate this one as well. Okay? I'm going to duplicate it and we're going to shut it off. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one foreground and I'm going to call this one background. Okay? You can see that you need to put a little bit of thought into things when you're doing it, okay? So let's now take the foreground element again, much like we've done before. Let's actually call this again foreground so we can keep track of everything pretty easily, okay? And I'll duplicate it one more time and we'll call it background, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to place the foreground element into the foreground group. We'll twirl it back up so that we don't get all confused. I'm going to take the background element. I'm going to place it into the background group. We're going to twirl it up again so there's no confusion. Okay, so let's now with our embossed blood effect, again, right click, we're going to come down to add image mask, and the image mask we're adding is the Rampant Design Tools logo. Okay, now as soon as I add that image mask, you'll notice that nothing has happened. Well, why is that? Aha, uh -huh. it's important to keep in mind that I had the foreground and the background blood turned on at the same time. So now you'll see there is the blood that's going to appear on our Rampant Design Tools logo. So let's now twirl that up. Let's turn off our foreground effect and let's turn on our background effect. I'm going to twirl this down. We're going to do exactly what we did before, add image mask. We're going to take our Rampant Design Tools logo and we're going to use that as our image mask, except this time with the heads up display called up, we're going to invert that mask. So you can now see what we have done. We've now created two different, you can actually see the very slight cutout there. 
we've created two different blood layers. One's gonna be the foreground, one's gonna be the background. Now, last but certainly not least, we need to combine the rampant design tools element and our foreground blood effect. Let's do that with a new group. We're gonna call this rampant, oops, let's make sure we don't actually switch our viewer here. Let's make sure that we call this group rampant design tools logo with blood. Okay, let's put in our main logo. Let's put in our foreground blood effect. There we go. Let's turn on our rampant logo. There we go. And now all I have to do is come back into the properties. I can come down to the Z position and we can adjust it a little bit to give it some separation from the background. And now you'll see that when this blood effect comes in and hits the rampant design tools logo, you'll see that we actually have depth from the background. Now, how did I create that camera move moving in? Much like we did in our last tutorial, all we're gonna do is come up to object. I'm gonna add a new camera. We're gonna come to the library. We're gonna come to our behaviors. We're gonna come to, make sure that we turn off our emboss search here, to our camera, to our dolly. And we're gonna give this a very, very slow move in. Maybe about, I don't know, 200 I think is good. And now when we hit play, you'll now see that we now have our rampant design tools logo with that blood effect looking pretty realistic and we've created something that we can use whether it's in a Halloween production whether it's in back end for a horror blu-ray but it creates a very cool and very realistic blood effect using these fantastic rampant design tools elements all right now don't forget if you want some great free 4k elements head on over and check them out at 4kfree.com and to check out the entire Rampant Design Tools product line, you can head on over and check them out at rampantdesigntools.com.